Welcome to another episode of Stone Nation, a production of Park Media. Before I introduce today's guest, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, share, and leave a five-star review. And if you find this podcast useful in any way and want to pay us the ultimate compliment, head on over to our Patreon page where you can subscribe to be a classic, stealth, or beast mode subscriber. On this episode, I had the pleasure to talk with the owner and founders of Canyon Adventure Vans, Jason and Jenna. And as some of you guys already saw on YouTube, we get to talk about his new design called the GSS and CSS for the Storyteller. Not only do we go into detail about the new system, but we also talk about how Jason and Jenna work as a team to be able to keep Canyon Adventure Vans running smoothly. I had such a fun time talking to these two, I know you guys will have a great time listening to this episode. So sit back, relax, and please welcome to the Stone Nation family, Jason and Jenna from Canyon Adventure Vans. Okay, welcome to Stone Nation Podcast, Jason and Jenna. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. We're stoked to be on here. Yeah. I'm stoked to have you guys on here because as most people, we just kind of drool over your products all the time. (laughs) But um, before we start getting into your new system, the GSS and CSS, uh, for those that don't know your business, because maybe they just started looking at the mode and et cetera, et cetera. Can you give a quick background about how you guys started and where you guys are at today? Absolutely. I'll let Jason start on that. Want me to start on yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh gosh, it was probably a year and a half ago. We bought a Rebel. We bought a 2020 Rebel. And the idea was I can use it for fly fishing. You know how passionate I am about fly fishing. I'd have something to go fly fishing in. And then we can also turn it into maybe a little you know, break even profitable deal. We'll start renting it out on outdoorsy.com. So when we got it, I think Jenna went on a couple of girls trips first. And then I went on a couple trips with my brother-in-law and father-in-law and the whole garage thing. That's really why we bought it. That was one of the really cool things about it to put our gear back there. And we're super active people, but everything was sliding around and there's boxes and rattling. And it just, it's such a small van already to have that footprint already be taken up with a bunch of junk so we decided to like create something really cool for us. It was never even a business idea. It was just, let's create some really nice bench seats with storage, a place that we can sit, hang out, turning the seats around and all that, you know, sometimes it's a pain in the butt. So it'd be super nice and a revel to walk in the back, sit down and do all that and dine and play games and have dinner, et cetera. So that's kind of how it got started. We made it for ourselves and then we put it on outdoorsy.com, started advertising it like, you know, here's our van, you know, here's the seating system, et cetera. Somebody took a snapshot of it and moved it over to the Revel Facebook page. And at that point, we started getting all these emails and messages saying, hey, is this something that you guys are going to make for Rebels? And it wasn't even a thought process. And at that point, we're like, yeah, you know, I can, we can make extra couple bucks here and there. I'll make one or two a month or one or two every couple months. And that's kind of how it started. We ended up, we gave a launch date and we took some pictures. Her sister is a photographer and she went out and we took pictures on Super Bowl Sunday um, and then launched it that evening at midnight. And then the rest is history. So it's been like a, throughout the time that the storyteller has gained popularity, it's been a slow kind of trickle with how you adapted to the storyteller teller's layout yes um so now you have a system called gss and a css because in the revel it's called gless which is garage lounge storage systems okay and then it was meant to be in the garage obviously a lounge area with bench seats table etc and storage so with the gss that's garage storage systems with the css that's that is the countertop seating system. Okay. And you know there's a theme here that we have. It's the something SS, something <laughs> <laughs> You have to add all the pretty, S's at the pretty end. Pretty soon it'll be a GLSS, SS, SS. <laughs> Extended SS. Or as David Alvan likes to say, home of the gliss. The gliss. Oh, the gliss. Yes. Spilling out the acronyms. Yes. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So CSS, countertop seating system. Okay. So let's talk about uh, those two products. So- What exactly is it and what can you do with it and can you modify it and what do you offer in regards to any type of modifications if you can do that? Yeah, so we'll start with the GSS first. The whole idea with that is, you know, originally we did the GLSS for the storyteller and we still do that and we still sell those quite often. Um, 
but we're finding out, we're learning more and more with the more, you know, the storytellers coming in every week, every day, we're seeing that a lot of them leave that, the um, driver's side bed down. So they'll leave that down all day long and use that as a countertop to either eat, stand and work, et cetera. So by seeing that, I start thinking to myself, well, then there, for a lot of those people, there would be no need to have a bench seat under there because they would never use it. So we thought, why not maximize that storage area, completely fill it all the way up, make it the same height as the bed, the bottom of the bed, so you can pop those legs, close them up and actually free up more aisle space and have that bed rest on it. So you just get, you maximize the storage area. Right. Um, and make it accessible from inside the van. Like if you're sitting at the Groove Lounge, be able to have it so it's super convenient. If you're standing back there working, you can reach down, open up a slider, get to whatever you need, et cetera. Or from the back of the van, opening up the rear doors and accessing your gear from the back as well. So that's kind of how that was developed in to replace the bench seat just to be able to maximize that whole storage area and make it look super clean, part of part of the storyteller. Right. And that I think that's one thing that majority of the people of why they come to you is because you make that clean product. Because even with the GLSS, it just looks so clean. You raise that bed and it's just like, wow, yeah. what's going on back here? <laughs> yeah. We, tr we try to make it super simple, easy. Our whole, our whole model, business model on that side of things is make it, when we first started, I was like, I got to design something that my mom, who's 75 years old, can put together. Something that she can take out of a box, slide it in, strap it down, and be done with it. So it can't be too complicated. There's tons of DIYers in this van industry already, and they're going to do their own thing. But for a lot of customers, I feel they need it pretty much done for themselves. They don't even want to put a leg on. They just want to be able to slide it in, five minute, 10 minute install, and be done with it. So nothing's permanent on this. So if no. you want to take it out, you can without damaging, screwing stuff in and out, stuff like that. Okay, that's good yep. to know. That's That was, again, the whole purpose as well. As for myself, I don't like putting holes in my van because I'm afraid I'll change my mind and mean pop something out, put something in, and now I have a new hole somewhere. So I don't like doing, I don't like screwing anything in. Could you mount them and make them um, permanent? Absolutely. You can bolt them to the floor, the walls, do all that, et cetera. But the whole idea is they're modular, they're lightweight, and they're portable, which means you might have a different outing next weekend where you need that space. And you're either maybe, maybe you're in the apparel business and you're doing a trade show and you have all these boxes of all your clothes and hats. You got to pop everything out, load that, stack that up for your trade show, do your trade show, come back, and then you can put your GSS or GLSS back in. So that's the whole idea for that. We just got done moving. So I popped mine out for a week and it was nice just to be able to take boxes to and from work and, you know, from one house to the other. It was just nice and it made me realize this is exactly why we made this so modular and portable and lightweight to be able to have, you know, to be able to one day be moving in it and then the next day it's, it's a lounge. That's a great idea. I love it. Now, um, from what, now I can only talk about the one that you did for me, but it's a basically a three tier or three level system, right? So you have uh, essentially you can put stuff on the very bottom, in the middle, and then on top. Yes. And then you have the sliding drawers. Yes. And then you have the baskets. Mm -hmm. And then you have a sliding slide out yes. that will go out the back yes. door, correct? Yeah. So you can do a cargo tray slide out. So basically it's the same model, the GSS. It's one way. And then instead of doing sliding doors, the next option would be to do the wire basket pullouts. So if you want to have those types of drawers. And then secondly, the third option would be to have the cargo tray slide out on the bottom. So if you have a barbecue grill, whatever it is that you have, you, for instance, your fishing gear, you would be able to add something like that, slide it out and just have be able to be right there and not have to lean too far into the back end of your garage. So it's really versatile. I think so. Yeah. 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 So as of right now, those are the basically the three options yes. of being able to modify it a little yes. bit. Okay, yeah. and, and then we'll, we'll grow from there. As we, like anything, the more we use it, the more we're sitting in the back of our storyteller. We're going to figure out, you know, the things that we can add, or it'd be cool to have this here and do this. So th for us, being having, you know, we're we're van owners. We own two rebels at the moment, and then we have our storyteller. Hopefully, should be here by the end of the month. So for us, we sit, we're in our vans every day. We drive them every day. And that's just, by doing that, it really, really helps us understand how things work and 
and by I'll go in there at, when we get home and I'll have dinner and I'll go crack a beer and go in the back of the van and sit in there for two hours and just think, now if I'm standing here, wouldn't it be kind of cool if I can just reach down and this would be here or we can put this here or have a little drawer here or a sliding door here. So it really helps us understand the space better and how to make it a cleaner, more efficient, effective uh, use. Yeah, and I think you kind of uh, really put the icing on the cake when you made the CSS. You want to talk how that works in tandem with the GSS? Yeah, so once you once we figured out, like you leave that driver's side bed down all the time. So we figured, okay, here's the storage system that'll go underneath. We have that down. Well, it's all set up to stand and work and eat and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be really cool to come up with something where you can sit one person maybe can stand and do work. The other person could sit or we can be out and we can both sit there and have our coffee and our breakfast there or whatever. So to be able to have chairs that fold up that aren't in the way all the time that fold down. So it frees up all that aisle space. We can put our bikes there or we can just leave it down and walk in and out of the van and, and not have to run in anything. So if there was a permanent bench seat there on the passenger side, it would take up a lot of that aisle way. So that's why we created the CSS to be able to either fold the seats down, have all that room back there for more gear, bikes, or just a wider aisle area. And then also the option of flipping them up and then having a place to sit. Yeah, that's, so. a, that's a game changer. Genius. I, th <laughs> I think so. We, got, we have a really good team and we'll always just run things by each other and, and make sure it can work. Like if I come up with an idea, I have to go to Jenna and be like, all right, this is my idea. How are we going to get it shipped? So then she'll look at box sizes and we'll have to, so everything we make is based off of how do we ship it? Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing for us to make something here, but if we can't have our guys make it in the next building, it's got to be simple where they can put it together and then we have to be able to box it up safely and get it shipped to the customer. That's the key. So everything has to go through the process. So I can think of something over here on this side but it won't ship, so then we have to scratch the idea. So speaking of which, do you guys, on a personal note, mind talking about how you guys work as a team for the business? Yeah, go for it. Sure. He has his own warehouse, and I have my own <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> um, no, I, I would say Allison and I are the day-in, day-out customer service, handling, processing orders, kind of helping people... Um, off the ledge, if you will, about like, oh my God, there's so many options. And, you know, you look at the website and you're just not sure what you need, where you should go, how things work. Um, so having sort of our side in the soft goods, the accessories, the boxing, and then Jason ha has his side with the creative space and the installation space. Um, I mean, we work in the same area every day, but sometimes I don't see him all day. So it, it's actually fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we do have our moments, but we're good. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, think about it. We come to work in the morning, go home, we're around each other all the time. He stays out of the business side. I stay out of the creative side. Gotcha. So we stay in each other, you know, our own lane, which I think is really important. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good yin, yin and yang yeah. system. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about price. Sure. How much are one of these suckers? For the storyteller? Yes. So the the GSS and the CSS combined combo is thirty nine ninety five. Okay. And that includes the whole seating system, two cup holders, a couple storage bags underneath the CSS, and then for the GSS, that's the one with the sliding doors, um, the three levels. It comes with three cup packs as well. Um, so yeah, thirty nine ninety five. And then we're also breaking it down on our website. Hopefully tonight I'll have it done. But the CSS will be twelve ninety five. And the GSS will be twenty seven. So you yeah. can purchase it as a standalone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good to know. Yeah. And then if they bring the van, their vans here, do you install them? Because I know that was one of the big perks of driving all the way over here was that you would install them. Are you going to do the same with the same okay. same deal? Yeah. So if you bring if you bring your van here and we install it, obviously you're saving a bunch on shipping. And then we do a complimentary install on any of the GLSs or the GSSs or the CSSs. Those are all complimentary. Anything other than that, we charge for installation fees. But those those items with the SS, you get a complimentary uh, installation here. A lot of people appreciate that, yeah. to include myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I drove. Where did I drive from? You drove from like 
Texas or something. Yeah. The first well, you were picking I was, up your van? I came up, uh, I spent Thanksgiving up at, uh, in Washington and I drove down. That's what it was. But how it, do you keep track of where you've been? Like it's all becoming a blur. <laughs> Those 20,000 miles are just <laughs> oh my gosh. one mile. Lucky you. <laughs> See, we're working for, for what you have. Like I would, we would love to sell someday and just be in our van all the time, or at least I would. Yeah. It, it's a good life. It has its ups yeah. and downs, but I mean, you guys already have your stuff already decked out and know exactly, you know, you've been in the business for a yeah. while. So I feel like it'll be a lot easier for you guys to do something like really, that. Yeah. Getting it figured out. And then also just listening to our customers like yourself. And you just hear, you hear different things from everybody and what works for them, what doesn't work for them, you know, and you just kind of, we just try to process it all. And it really helps. It really helps with the success of our business yeah, is by the, picking your brain. That and, customer feedback is huge for us. Well, it's also nice that you guys listen to the customers as yeah. well. So yeah, you have to. Yeah. Speaking of which, you kind of lightly touched up about it, um, about your competition. Why should people come to you guys versus someone else? What sep separates you well, guys? Well, I would say first and foremost, it's that we answer our phones. Um, you know, Allison and I spend hours sometimes on the phone with customers, you know, Comp comprising their orders specifically to their needs. And if something breaks, you know, we answer the phone, we get it shipped out usually that day, a replacement, return label. Most of the time people send emails they don't hear for, you know, days, weeks before they get any sort of return um, information. So I would say for me as a consumer, if I knew that I could call and get a live person, you know, after two rings and say, hey, you know, UPS dropped this off and it's broken and I need replacement parts and know that I'm going to get a shipment that day. And so in three days I have replacement parts. Like that's a company I would keep going back to. It's like, I, I like to say that we're the Nordstrom of, um, you know, van products. Cause Nordstrom's like, yeah, you, you know, we'll take it back. We'll get you a new one. Like if it's broken or damaged or whatever, like no questions asked, we'll, we'll, you know, figure it out within reason. But you know, it's, if a product arrives damaged or something happens, we are accountable for it and we assume responsibility. So that for me, those are the, those are the companies I want to work with. Yeah. No, yeah. that definitely sets you apart. Customer service will definitely make or break a company yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Um, now we also have our customers FaceTime us too. So that happens two, three times a week where yeah, I can't has tell you issue. how many instructional videos yeah. I've done. Like, They're can like, you get on a FaceTime yeah. and I'm teaching somebody how to disassemble and reassemble because they got to put a new T-nut in or something. And they just like, God, that was amazing. And thank you. I didn't think this was going to work for me. And so then they have a sense of like, you know, if they need to make adjustments, they know their unit and how to, you know, kind of configure things. So, and we didn't jump into this as a cash grab either. This is uh, us getting into this business was all organic. Like yeah. it just happened naturally from us buying a van, making in products, making tons of products for our needs. And then once we get it done, we feel like, Hey, this is kind of cool. Let's introduce it to the rest of the van life community. So, um, and, and a lot of our, our, um, products are derived from customers saying, Hey, could you guys make me this? And then we see this, you know, functionality of it. For instance, the the CEO of T-Mobile wanted three-inch bolsters for his bed risers, and now we sell them, and people love them because you don't lose your sleeping space because the the mattress doesn't have to come up so far, and you know the van narrows. So um, that was something that was given to us as a special order from a client or a customer, and now we provide that. And so people have options based on other people's sort of ideas and stuff and we take it and we test it and then if we think it's worth it we'll sell it well said <laughs> yes, you don't need me here. i'm gonna go back to building <laughs> yeah, you guys do make a, a not only a cute team but a good team uh, yeah <laughs> we're good but uh so what i heard was that you guys have outstanding customer service you take accountability of your products basically you back it up and then you care about your customers yeah deeply yeah well, i mean we yeah. build the community i mean I've talked to three people today and know them, you know, first name and talk, talk about trips and kids. And they're sending me pictures of their, you know, kids are home from college because they're spring break. And I'm sending them pictures of my kid who's home from spring break. And we haven't even met these people. We've only talked, you know, on the phone a hundred times for their order and getting things situated. So it's like now we have this community 
And half of the people, I'd say 75% of the people I've never met. I mean, Jason may have met them at rallies, but, um, you know, I feel like I know these people and I have not met them. Well, what's sad about that is that most companies, you don't get that kind of, in, uh, dare I say, intimacy with yeah. a company, you know, because I, what I really appreciate is the fact that not just me, but anybody can come in here. They can meet both of you. You guys greet them like family right mm -hmm. off the bat. You go out of your way to help you know, whatever their needs are and you do really cool custom work. So, I mean, as a consumer myself, that's what I really do appreciate about you guys. Um, so to change gears just a little bit, COVID, let's talk about how it has. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a blessing and it's been a curse <laughs> for, I know a lot of people, but right. So let's just talk about some of the hurdles you've had to jump and issues that you've had since COVID. Well, since we started this business in our garage, um, and it was right when COVID hit, I would say, you know, a lot of it was the, the timing of delivery of aluminum and coordinating the cushions from our upholsterer and then trying to put together an order to send out, you know, in its entirety all at the same time and delays because UPS is losing drivers to COVID and things are just you know, we had our vendor, our aluminum vendor shut down his whole operation because he had to, because there was a COVID outbreak. So that shuts us down because now we don't have supplies being delivered. And I, I don't think that a lot of people sort of see that global trickle down effect of if one person stops, it stops the whole, you know, chain of, you know, chain of events. events. It's yeah. like, you know, we can't build if we don't have anything. So, and then for us too, it's like, if we get a, a scare that maybe somebody in our warehouse has it, we have to shut down and we have to all go get tested. And that takes some days. And then maybe we do lose someone to, you know, family or whatever. And now we have one less builder for the day. And, you know, COVID's just been sort of like, it's, it's like real. Frogger, you know, <laughs> you're just like, don't get hit by COVID or anything that has to come with it. Um, but, you know, it's been a blessing for us because we're in a business that is, you know, accommodates COVID. But as far as, you know, the downside of it, it's that we have so many vendors that we have to rely on daily that if one goes down, then that sort of then prohibits us from shipping out, you know. Are most awesome. customers, do most customers um, accept that and acknowledge it and say, okay, you're doing your best? Or you know, do we, you get some so. fireballs out oh, there? Oh, we that get some fireballs. And a lot of those fireballs are now my besties because they they got a response from me personally that said, this is the situation. And hopefully you can understand that this just isn't us like not having enough staff or being unprepared. This is you know, we're depending on lots of other people to make your order come together. And, you know, we're at the mercy of UPS. I mean, sometimes when we were working out of our garage, we'd have nine units sitting outside of our house. And the UPS truck who is in Topanga Canyon, which is a small truck, he'd show up and he'd go, you guys, I can't get these on the truck. And so then it would be the next day and he'd go, I can only take two. And so that for us was like, we have all these units to put out and people are waiting, but UPS can't accommodate us, which is obviously why we moved to a bigger space. But, you know, that was one of the roadblocks that we had right off the bat was like, we just, we don't have everybody on our team yet in order to like know the, the yin and yang of it. So. Right. Yeah. And even like upholstery. Like, so our upholsterer who makes all of our cushions, all of our soft goods, Sumbrella. So Sumbrella Factory. Yeah, shut Sumbrella down. Factory so had a COVID outbreak. We couldn't get we couldn't get Everything anything. Was on back Sumbrella. Order. Yeah. So he had to call all over the country seeing if any any of his basically his competition, if they have any extra they roles that, that they would sell. So, yeah. wow. so yep. just those types of issues that people don't see that, you know, affect our lead times. And it's still happening. Like, you know, just because now, you know, we're coming out of it and there's vaccine and there's hope and this, it's like again, if Sumbrella has another outbreak, they got to shut the factory down. And so we could have this problem again. And the same thing with foam or any type of material. It's like, we just don't have control over those things because it's, you know. But on that note, we're very blessed and very thankful for the last year and a half for sure. Yeah. Even though it's been crazy and we've had to juggle a lot, and especially the girls in the office, 
trying to make sure we have materials here so we can continue to build has has been a lot of work on them but i think we're it's a it's a it's a good year and it's it's really um something that we're very grateful for so i'm glad that we're having these issues yeah definitely gets you guys a little bit closer as far as like being becoming a family i yeah. think you know, because yeah. one one person goes down, it's like, oh, not yeah. only I, I think the feeling that I get from you guys is when one person goes down, it's not like, oh, man, and now I can't do this. It's like, oh, is he going to be OK? Yeah. What can right. we do? Can we help you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we are a family here, too. Yeah. Like most of most everybody who works for us is related. Yeah, somehow. half our team over yeah. there I've known since the kids were born and one I've known since I was 20, which is dating me. But been a long time <laughs> and then my daughter's over there working too so you know it's all kind of it is a true family business yeah for sure people come over to the house we hang out we go to yeah. their house so yeah. we've we've really created a good uh a good mix of people here yeah that's awesome yeah um now to change gears a little bit more not only do you offer this new GSS and mm -hmm. CSS and a GLSS mm -hmm. for the storyteller, mm -hmm. what other things do you offer? Because obviously, I'm sure people see the big sign that says OWL Authorized yes. Dealer. Yes. <laughs> what, <laughs> Good what? plug for OWL. <laughs> um, gosh. Well, I would say probably for the Revel um, industry is we have over 60 SKUs. Um, and with the storyteller, I would believe by the end of the year, we'll probably have pretty close to that too. Okay. Um, everything from window covers to floor mats to all types of storage. We won't stop with the GSS and the CSS. We're going to come up with even more, you know, different, different style of um, seating arrangements, storage arrangements, et cetera, mattresses, sheets. Um, I said window covers, vent covers, floor mats, all the exterior stuff, we're going to do some roof rack upgrades to make it look, you saw my roof rack mm -hmm. with the expedition rails and kind of extend it a little bit. Um, and then, of course, all the owl products, um, all the max tracks and steps. And yeah, so, we have a lot of we have a lot of products. So we're really going to focus in on the storyteller clientele and just the whole idea would be. That platform is amazing. That's one of the reasons why we and their company is amazing. The people behind the brand are even better than the brand. Um, but their platform is so great, but we can just, just tweak a few things and make it kind of like the Ritz Carlton on the inside of that van, you know? Right. No, so. I think you're going to be able to do it. Do you have any timelines with the things that you mentioned by chance or? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I get, I'm very impatient. I can't, yeah. We'll have, it, it's going to be quick. Okay. So we'll have our storyteller by the end of the month. We're trying to go to the, well, we are going to the uh, Modes and Moab meetup, if I'm saying that right. Um, so we'll have all of our, we'll have probably four or five things already done for that so we can show them. Um, but we'll continue once we have our van, we'll continue to develop products and create things as a team and, and really enhance enhance that uh the storyteller mode right and do you do the suspension or skid plates or anything like that um skid plates we'll start doing skid plates um where we are a van compass dealer but uh we do not mess with the suspension tires wheels i usually give that to um, a couple people here in southern california that can handle that okay um, i don't think we ever want to get into that to be honest with you most everything that we do our customers come in and they're gone the same day like we don't really want to get into having vans Holding here. Vans, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everything that we can do in a day, if it's skid plates, if it's bumpers, if it's steps, if it's owl products, obviously all of our stuff, get the customer in and out and on their way. So you saw we have a waiting room here. Mm -hmm. So we try to have internet, TV, coffee, soda drinks. You can order food, um, let the customer hang out, do their thing, and then have their van done for them on the same day. And then now we just have a new building too. This is a good time to, to talk about that. We are moving into space number one, which is like four times the size of all this. So we'll be all in one building. So we won't have two separate buildings. We'll actually be all in one building now. There'll be a bunch more offices, a lounge for our customers, nice. a showroom for the customers. I'm trying to talk her into like ping pong table for employees, you know, dartboards. No, we cannot have people doing anything but building. <laughs> Whoa, Jenna. <laughs> I, yeah, am. Exactly. I have to. I'm like, we'll put a fridge in I there. Have to. Spoil everybody. This one's like a squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> well, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So talking about the future, 
it's first of all, it's really hard to put into like a mental capacity when you think about just how short you guys have been in business and how far you've gone in that short amount of time. So I'm going to ask this next question in to put that into perspective is where do you guys see yourselves in five years? Where do you see Kenyan adventure vans? Hmm. Can I answer that one? You can answer your answer and then I'll answer <laughs> my answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. She's already, we're for her. She's probably going to say we've already sold it and she's, uh, in Italy somewhere traveling around <laughs> five years from now, I see there's, I don't see it slowing down at all. If it does, it might a little bit, but it was already jamming before COVID. Um, if anything, COVID opened people's eyes up to the whole van life thing. And so I think, I think it's going to continue, you know, we don't know what the economy is going to be like either. So that's going to be a factor as well, but I think it'll continue, continue the growth. Um, for us, we're not going to limit ourselves to just a storyteller or a rebel. We are obviously in the building industry now. We're making things. We want to make them for other vans as well. The DIY thing is huge, so we're going to start coming out with a lot of components for the DIYers that are pretty much plug and play. Um, so we have a lot of things that we'll start doing. We're going to jump in on the transits because I feel like that's something that's we're going to start seeing more and more of, so we want to be prepared for that. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of products. There's tons of things that we can do and continue to scale our company and grow our company. Um, so that's where I see what, that's where we're at. Okay. Yeah. No. Lots you, of growth. Yeah. Not my answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, five years, gosh, just since we've done this much in one year, it's hard to scale it for five years. Um, but I think as this community grows, I mean, ultimately, I'd love to just be on a rally tour, you know, like a rock star <laughs> <laughs> and then have a couple months off where you can come home and be in my house and and like, yeah. you know, be like a school teacher uh, schedule where we work for eight months and we're off for four months or however that works. But yeah, I mean, I I was never a van lifer. It was more so for, you know, Jason and then just for us to have. And so for me, it's just like the community is I'm a social butterfly. So I love the community and I'd like to be able to be on the road in the community. But, you know, so five years, I don't want to be sitting behind my desk is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, no, that's good. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. I don't blame you. And no, that's perfect because we talked about that. So the other thing about building our brand is not only just products, it's about building that community and putting on and giving back to the community, right? So one of the things that we'd like to do here in the next, we said April, but with the move and everything, it might be impossible, it might be May, but we want to start doing um, meetups for storyteller owners, for Revel owners, because a lot of people, it's their first time and they're really, they got so excited going to the dealership, picking up their van, they forgot 90% of everything they told them about it. They don't know how to charge their batteries. They don't know how to drain the water. You know, they don't know how to winterize. They don't ha know how to, to do a lot of things on their vans. So when they get here, we're seeing it. People are asking us, every customer that comes in here, how to do stuff. So we thought, you know what, let's give back and we'll do these meetups where we'll have a coffee truck come, we'll have a taco truck come, we'll hang out, we'll get together, we'll have people talk about, you know, their mods or however anything just generalization on how to upkeep their vans and stuff and really help a lot of the newer people that are getting into this van life thing understand their vans better so we're going to definitely start doing a lot more meetups and hangouts and helping people um, with their vans i mean there's a, a group that i've been asked to head which is a rebel group for females oh, because wow. a lot of these women are you know solo or it's just them and a mate and you know they they don't want to ask the men. So they want to have a support group of women that they can ask um, how things work. So that in itself is its own community in yeah. the, you know, Rebel Nation. So um, I think there's, um, you know, there's, there is a bigger community, there's an umbrella community, and then there's smaller communities within that, right. you know, people want to have outlets for and, and forums for. So are you going to head that? When I have a spare moment. <laughs> Sounds like she's trying to get out of the office. I, I, it's hard now because, you know, I just. I think that's a great idea. I don't have the time. I mean, like I said, Allison and I are on the phone every day, all day long with customers. And I can't see that going away or being, you know, pushing it to someone else because I feel like 
right now she and I, we know we know most of what's going on in this company. Jason likes to put new stuff on the website. And we're like, wait, what? That's on the website? <laughs> <laughs> we're not sure what you're talking about, but we'll find oh, out. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's just, it, it's a... Uh, <laughs> That's the truth too. Yeah, it is the truth. It's awesome. Allison's I'll make something like, and be like, oh, this is cool. It's going on the website tonight. No, he'll post <laughs> it on a story and then we'll get 10 calls the next day and Allison will be like, what did he post last night? I need to know how much it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's hilarious. <laughs> but I mean, that's how you evolve. It, it's a, I think it's a, a tough process sometimes, but I mean, I think without that, you wouldn't be here where you're at right now. So yeah, that's awesome. So speaking of community, that leads me to my last question that I like to ask on every podcast, and that is, what does it mean for you guys to be part of this donation community? Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mine's different than yours, so. <laughs> it means, actually, it means a lot to me. Number one is because last year we got to know all the heads over at Storyteller, doing all the shows with Je Jeffrey and Thor and Lee and Tim and Andrew and their whole crew. Um, if I'm leaving somebody out, I apologize. Okay. Uh, put me on the spot. Um, but just that crew is unbelievable. I just went to Baja. Uh, I was down there for four days with them. They are such genuinely good people. It got us really excited to know that we were getting a, you know, storyteller mode. So I think that's really exciting is just knowing the company behind the brand, same as us, right? We want to have that same perception to our customers. So that means a lot, just knowing that they're there to back us and help us any, any way that they can. Um, that means a lot. And then just, it's another new community for us. It's the same as the Revels. Like we came in and didn't know anybody. And now we have so many Revel friends and I would imagine it's going to be exactly the same thing. It's the same clientele. They just chose a storyteller over a rebel. That's it. So I'm excited to meet a whole new group of people. Um, we're excited to just, yeah, to just build relationships because that's what it's all about. You can sell product all day long, but building relationships um, is what it's about. Like that feels good. A sell, Selling something feels great, right? It's okay, but building relationships and having customers invite us to their ranches in, in South Africa and that kind of stuff, that's, that's legit. So just building this new community for the storyteller community is um, super, I'm, I'm excited about that. Awesome. Yeah. Jenna? Um, I, I, I would say for me, I don't even know how big or what impact I have until someone tells me. I feel like I'm just here working a job and answering phones and answering questions. And then they're like, oh my God, you're that girl from the video and you did the thing. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that was me. You know, like I don't, I, I, I am not an on camera type person. So like having this community that knows me so well, and I don't know that they know me so well, you know, if that makes sense. Um, I think they feel like they know Jason way more because he's on more videos and, you know, probably seeing people, um, him seeing more people at rallies. But um, having that community face to face is more of what I crave, which is why in five years I'd rather be going and meeting people in person and talking about product and trips and that whole thing versus like just being on a phone and not having like, as you say, an intimate, you know, connection with someone. Um, so community to me is, it's a fantastic place to have, but I don't have, I have it over the phone. I don't have the, you know, face to face unless well, they come when here. they come so, here. Yeah. yeah There's yeah. some weeks we get 25 revels in here or yeah. and storytellers. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then when customers are here, they're here for a couple hours, even though yeah. it takes us 10 minutes to install, mm -hmm. they're here for a couple hours. Yeah. They're chatting, talking, looking at all the accessories, you know, they're asking questions. We're showing them how to do different things on their van, et cetera. So we definitely build community in person as well. Yeah. For sure. That's awesome. But yeah, we're, the community is everything, both Revel and Storyteller. I don't see any of that changing. It can't. It just yeah. has to be how it is. And owning vans is the real key. Like having a van, being in a van, not just talking, like we're walking the walk with you guys. And that's super important. Yeah. I think it's really cool that you guys are coming out to the moon meetup. Absolutely. 
Jason we'll be, will be there. I'm not invited. Yeah, she's invited, <laughs> but somebody's got to take care of the business. Someone's got to keep the business afloat. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. See, I'm going to go out there and just come home with tons of ideas. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see mods that people did on their modes. I'll be like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Let's do this. Well, I mean... If it makes you guys better as yeah. a company, why not? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Don't kill me, Jenna. No, <laughs> I, I'm used to it now. It's it's all grow, growing pains for sure. Well, that is a great way to end the podcast. I do appreciate your time. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate everything that you're doing for the community. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't have you on the podcast. <laughs> right. I hope not. But you guys are doing great stuff, and I love your guys' personal touch, and I love the customer service, and you know, I feel like you, you guys are definitely part of family now. So yep. thank you. Thank definitely. you. And thank you and for I, having, I having us. I am your dog's godmother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving myself that title now. <laughs> oh my well, you, you got to be in a line. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for having us because yeah, this you. is cool. Awesome. Let's do it again. We will, for sure. Stone Nation is a production of Park Media. The executive producer is Young Wah Kim. The audio engineer is Stephen Grasso. The marketing director is Guillaume Golson. The original music and artists is done by Jason Walsmith. The sound designer is Lorenzo Indriano. And the assistant sound designer is Peng Shi. Without any of these people, this podcast couldn't happen. So a big, huge thank you. And a big, huge thank you to you, the listener. If you like this episode, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a five-star review. This is Young Wah with Stone Nation, and I can't wait to share the road with you.